Grounds for Learning helps schools and nurseries make best use of their own grounds and local green space. Training educators and teachers sharing best practice and advising on improvements. In the first two films of the series, we looked at the approach to outdoor learning taken by schools in Scotland and the variety of practice. In this film, we'll look at how you can lead effective learning in local green space, practical issues, the planning, the resources that you'll need. I'm running uh, school sessions with three different primary schools across Dundee. Uh, the sessions have to all be based beyond the school's gates, so that's the learning in local green spaces rather than just learning in the school grounds. Um, so we're working in community garden spaces identified by the Community Gardens Officer of Dundee and uh, we're coming out and using those for all sorts of educational reasons. The best thing you can do here is get hold of a map, ask the pupils and head out for a walk with a colleague. The pupils often know where the secret places and best places in their area are, so start by asking them. When you're out, do not discount private or seemingly inaccessible green space. Other schools, universities, hotels and even private businesses are often welcoming of school groups. You just need to ask. Also, don't be put off by spaces that have a reputation for inappropriate nighttime or weekend use. They can often be a fantastic resource and school use may encourage more positive wider community engagement. The community gardener asked us to come and look at the space one time, so we had to be wandered up and we were amazed that between the multis there was this fantastic little space. And then um, when Ross came along, he showed us some opportunity how we could use it. On a visit, you should have the question, what's the learning potential of this place in mind? Write down your ideas or observations. Once you've found a space, there are a few things you need to do. This baseline survey can help clarify your opportunities and responsibilities. Firstly, it is good to ask permission of the landowners. If the landowner is not obvious, then make some inquiries. Generally, asking in the community or around the parents will work, and if not, a local green space council officer will have a record. Taking children out of the school, you always have concerns that if all the safety issues are covered. So we had a little recce. We went up there ourselves to have a look at it, looked around the space and we talked about possible possible dangers and how we could overcome them and the route that we would take if we were going up there and how safe it was um, and just covered all the risk assessment at that point. Remember you must use the format required by your school or authority. Any risk document should focus only on real risks and high risks, so things like crossing roads and hitting your head. Local green spaces usually fit into the routine and expected category, requiring annualised risk assessments and parental permission. Your local authority policies will confirm this. Now you have your space, you can develop an action plan for learning. Start thinking about some learning topics related to the place that may engage and stimulate your learners' interests. I have initial meetings with the teachers to get an idea of what subject areas they're going to study uh, and then I'll go away and come up with what I can fit into that curriculum. So I'll uh, look at maybe uh, food chains or food webs and I'll come up with an outdoor based activities and sessions to, to work around that. As a team we all sat down with Ross and talked about what we we're planning for the next term in numeracy and literacy and IDL. Uh, we talked about the levels the, the children were at and we talked about um, individuals um, how we wanted to focus on certain things with them. And from that, uh, Ross talked about possible lessons we could use that would develop these outcomes. Uh, and then we planned out certain dates and what we would do in each date. It's been really good because he's really incorporated that into what we've done up there. Like today we were learning all about um, the different parts of a tree and that's because we've been learning about different parts of plants and growing things. So he tried to link it up with what we're doing in school already. One of the delights of outdoor learning is the power it has to motivate learners. So consider activities and timings that allow pupils to explore and experience the place in a variety of ways. It may be that this is curricular led, but may also mean looking at some educational initiatives such as the John Muir Award or Outdoor Journeys. If you're feeling confident, take your learners to experience the place and ask them to help design the learning and inquiries with you. It certainly means being place responsive, that's to say, a theme or experience that is authentic and related to the location. The variety and breadth of ways you and your pupils experience the space is important. One session may focus on art, another on maths, a third on the biodiversity and so on. A spread of sessions through seasons or terms can help here. 
This breadth of experience is evidenced to engage pupils in complex issues and encourage them to make their own connections and judgments. Outdoor learning can often be the highlight of a pupil's day or week. Do not underestimate the ability of outdoor learning to motivate individuals. They're all quite lively and enthusiastic, but sometimes it's engaging them. That can be a bit tricky that they can get distracted, whereas when we're up in the garden, some of the children really have thrived in that environment because it's so active and they can get hands-on and discover things that they don't usually. Even today when we were up there, there were a bunch of children who found holes in the ground. A few weeks ago, they might not have looked twice at that, but now that they've discovered the wildlife that's up there in that park, they're using their imagination and trying to think what could live in this hole. Any learning outcomes also need to take account of wider attainment opportunities. From the start, it is important to build in an assessment. Are you out to raise attainment in health and well-being, or perhaps engage pupils in citizen science? Build your assessment around the key outcomes. Many charitable organisations, community organisations, local authorities or even private businesses may be able to support you. The best way for schools to come and work with us is to get us in, get us talking to the staff um, and I would also say go for like a whole school approach so get as many staff and support teachers working and involved with the project and that way any knowledge and ideas has been shared uh, between everyone. Now you have a plan, it is time to approach anyone you feel could help you. Partners should include parents who hold the key to support and local contacts. A letter home or a display at school can help convey the learning opportunities and allay concerns they may have. Parents and grandparents are also a key source of extra adults for ratios and for local knowledge, for history and for information. Evidence shows that taking part in activities to improve green space, pupils develop a deeper care and understanding. Simple activities such as pruning, planting, litter cleaning or even signposting can be used here to great effect. Make sure you have the landowner's permission and focus on leaving only natural and native items. Through the sessions, the children's work and voice and your assessments, you can gather a simple portfolio of evidence. Reflecting on this and considering why can help you improve your practice. Record your thoughts and share them with colleagues. We're recording and assessing by photographing the journey that they're experiencing. We also came back to the classroom and we did an evaluation. So they talked about what was the things they enjoyed, what did they find difficult, what did they learn from it. I think maybe the next stage would be to formalise that a wee bit. The Beyond Your Boundary project has developed a simple toolkit to help schools use local green space. There's also funding and support available for schools looking to take up the opportunity. Definitely learn a lot from Ross. He's really taught me how to incorporate like numeracy and literacy into the lessons that we're doing out there by just taking the learning from the classroom and bringing it outside, just in a different context. I love outdoor learning. I think it's you know up till now I've been very limited in how I use it. Uh, I think I've always been quite outdoorsy. Got the children out, especially during the summer term. But this is different now. It's thinking about when you're planning your lesson, you're thinking so. Could I use the context of outside? The intentions would be the same, but I might teach it in an outside and in a different way. You can visit the links below for any more information.